Hello everyone, this is Paul Hodgson from Box of Frogs and today I'm going to concentrate on uh, doing a little bit of skin softening, a bit of beauty retouch up, whatever you want to call it, uh, using Capture NX2. The image that you see in front of me was uh, an outtake from a, uh, a shoot I did with a, a local company and the batteries in my SB900, this was lit incidentally with one SB900 into an umbrella. The battery started to uh, to, to flag a little uh, and it couldn't keep up with, uh, with with me. So setting here was about f4.5, 250th of a second. Uh, flash was triggered with the Nikon CLS system, so for you Nikon people out there, that was just a bit of information. Um, quarter power as well on the uh, through the CLS, so I ran it on manual, so everybody that sat in front of the camera that day had the same quality and quantity of light. Anyway, uh, toward the end of the day, the, the batteries, which were fantastic, uh, only one set, in fact two in the end, um, th this particular set started to flag somewhat um, and didn't illuminate uh, Diana. Diana is the, obviously the lady that you're sitting in front of here. So what other things I want to do is, um, I would normally, incidentally, nothing has been done to this file. This is the raw file that came straight out of the camera. We'll have a quick look. What I would normally do is have just a quick scan around of face, or anyone's face, just to remove any outbreaks of spots or acne or anything like that. Um, I'd leave things like scars, um, her mole, because intrinsically that's who she is, that's what she has, and uh, who am I to to remove things like that? So um, I would use this tool here, <coughs> excuse me, if I was going to remove spots, just the simple healing cloning type tool, but in this particular image all I'm really going to be concentrating on uh, is lightening her eyes, lightening her skin and applying a little bit of blur, Gaussian blur, uh, to soften the skin. I don't want to remove all of these pores. Because again, that's part of the face. I'm not looking to turn her plastic. I'm not going to look like she's covered in cling film, cellophane, saran wrap, whatever anybody gets to call it these days. So what I've done is I've set up uh, already got some steps in here called skin softener. This was, uh, I think, this came from uh, Jason O'Dell. It's his setting, so I effectively just use that. Um, but I can play around with the opacities. I'm not going to do that on this particular image. I'm just going to show you as as it comes. It is a little strong. Um, so ordinarily, what I would do is reduce the opacity across those two levels of Gaussian blur, just to reduce the effect of the softening. Anyway, so uh, this is currently engaged, it's ready to go. Uh, I can paint on with a paintbrush. What I'm going to do, because I'm lazy, is I'm going to use the lasso tool. As you can see, the lasso tools uh, appeared as this little lasso, surprisingly. Um, and I've got the plus symbol. So everything inside of the lasso tool is going to be affected by the, uh, the Gaussian blur layer. So I'm going to remember to come down into a chest, back out again. This is very, very rough. Incidentally, I'm using a mouse on a PC, so... And there, using Photoshop language, that's my selection. But rather than affect it all, and I certainly don't want the eyes and the mouth to be affected by this, and if I could see the nostril better, I would uh, I'd also mask off the the nostrils, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up to the lasso tool and this time I'm going to use the minus key. Same tool but this is going to re detract, remove from adding and applying the Gaussian blur. So with the shift key entered, if I didn't press the shift key I believe the marching ant things that I've got there at the moment would also disappear. I'm going to give myself a fairly wide berth around the eye so I've got the shift key selected. Okay, so this is positive, this is negative. I'm going to do the same over here, continuing with my negative selection. There's that, and then again, pretty roughly around Diana's mouth. That's really poor. Let's try and sort that out. Oh, slightly better. Okay, I'm going to, I've just added the uh, the add to the selection layer back again, but it, this time I'm going to come over to the fill tool. Click the plus, come over to the bit 
um, the selection where I want the Gaussian blur to take effect and click once. I'm, I'm operating such a slow PC. Okay so there you can see you can understand now why I say I will reduce the opacity of the Gaussian blurs layers because for me that's just a little overdone but for speed because I'm, I'm currently honking towards five and a half minutes and I don't want to bore you um, what I'm doing here is I'm just being very very quick now the second thing I wanted to do if you recall on her skin was lighten it I've already got a selection of my Gaussian blur layer I can utilize that for any number of further alterations. Holding the shift key, I come up to adjust at the top left, come down to color, and click. I'm, I use LCH. Click it once, I can let go of the shift key now. And underneath my Gaussian blur layers, I have an LCH histogram. So I'm going to just click once, click and hold once, and drag up a little bit whilst watching the image just watch her skin okay okay so that skin's looking pretty good but one byproduct of looking at the selection is can you see there is this perimeter around her that shows where I've put an adjustment can you see it it's a fairly hard line so if I come up to the selection tool on the Gaussian blur layer and start to feather this terrible line and you'll see it start to drift 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 away and that looks pretty good to me let's turn the layer off turn it back on again Turn off and turn on. Turn off, turn off, turn on, turn on. You're obviously more aware of where that um, demarcation line is because you've been watching this video. But anybody who looks at the, this image either on a screen or in print afterwards hasn't got a clue. You don't get to see that edge. You don't always have to use something um, as broad, as large as 83. It just so happens that that's what it looks, that's how it looks best on my screen here. So click on this arrow tool, let's go in and have a, a quick look okay so that hard line not there at all it's blended beautifully so what next we've played with the skin we left out the eyes and the mouth so let's look at the eyes and mouth we just control I'm going to drag back once this time I'm going to create a new step I'm going to use LCH again I could of course use a number of other different tools I'm just clicking well anywhere really arbitrarily um, and if this is a global adjustment but really I'm concentrating on eyes and the mouth For a little bit of definition off, on, yep that's fine and now I'm doing my usual lazy little trick which is to get the lasso tool making sure this selection, this, I beg your pardon, adjustment, this step um, is selected. So with my plus sign I'm now going to draw fairly broadly around the eye, eyes, because I'm, I'm selecting a different section I'm holding the shift key down still with the plus tool. Nice broad selection around the eyes. Uh, this is be bad. This will be terrible. This this drawing, but uh, it's only because I'm using a mouse. But you'll get the idea. If you're good with uh, with computer mouse, fine. I'd like to use a graphics tablet because I'm much more accurate with it. Anyway, so there's the pluses. I don't need to touch anything else within the face. I'm going to fill those those three areas with this adjustment. So I come up to my fill toolbar on the plus sign. It doesn't matter which of these I select. They'll all be adjusted with the same adjustment. Of course, if you want this one to be slightly less lit or lighted, lightened, <laughs> lighted, lightened than this one, 
then you use this as a different selection but for now there we go and you get that beautiful hard line can you see so I'm going to correct that by just using the paint and fill mask this one I've used at 28 let's just have a look at the difference maybe down here I need a little bit more yeah I think that's okay and then the final part really because uh, just to, to show you what I can do is I, I'm going to add um, another adjust yeah another another step but utilizing this adjustment layer for these three areas so I don't have to do this drawing again so I'm gonna come up to adjustment holding my shift key down come to focus and sharp mask and I'm going to apply some sharpening to these areas here so this is what I tend to use 36 these are for my cameras 36 12 and then 4 and then I always drop the opacity down to around about 60 switch it off switch it on switch it off you don't I switch my hair back and forth um, and that's pretty much done what I'd end up doing actually would be to um, once I knew the output size uh, and medium I'd, uh, I'd put a, a specific step in to uh, to sharpen the image in the right areas um, or add some contrast in specific areas but just before I go this is the after view let's go to compare compare with the original Let's just move Diana over a little bit come in and what a difference now me trying to explain that's taken 12 minutes in reality it takes a heck of a lot less NX2 magnificent tool love it to pieces hope this has been useful uh, keep looking out for some other tutorials that I'll be doing send me any questions at Paul at bof bravo oscar foxtrot uk dot com um, uh, for any suggestions of of other videos that you might want me to go through uh, and if I'm skilled enough to be able to show you how to do that those those suggestions I certainly will if I won't I'll ignore it <laughs> listen have a great day thanks again bye bye.